I first came across Louis' story while I was researching Seabiscuit, which was my first book subject, and I got an original clipping about Seabiscuit from, I think it was 1938. I turned it over, and on the back there was an article about a uh, running phenom named Louis Zamperini. And already his story was very interesting. The war hadn't happened yet, but I wrote his name down in my research notebook and decided to look him up when I was done. And over the course of working on Seabiscuit, I came across other things about Louis' life, about his experience in the war, and I was really fascinated. And once I was done with Seabiscuit, I looked him up, I wrote him a letter, he called me, we had a wonderful conversation, and I knew right away this was what I wanted to write about for my next book. On a really basic level, this was probably the most amazing true story I had ever heard, the most amazing life story. But in a deeper way, it was an inspiring story because it's a story about a man who found a way to forgive the unforgivable. And that's something that's applicable to everyone's life. And I wanted to find out how he did that. And that was the deepest thing that was driving me to work on this story. Louis tried to make all the use he could of adversity, so that suffering meant something. And the book has reached a very wide audience and will reach a much, much wider audience through the movie. And I think that made him very happy because I think he felt his purpose in this world was to tell that story and to teach people how to use it for their own benefit and to have joyful lives. I think the essence of Louis' story is the understanding that the breadth of possibility is, is much wider than we realize. And he wanted people to understand that and take that and use it and be able to overcome the problems that they had in their lives. I don't think he knew how much he could overcome until he was pressed into great extremity. And it's hard to imagine being in worse circumstances than being out on a raft and starving to death for 47 days. But this man made it through and he, he never believed he was going to die. He's a lesson in optimism and perseverance. We are extraordinary survivors, all of us, not just Louis. He wanted us to know that. I think the bird was motivated both by having orders to make life miserable for Zamperini so that Zamperini would do propaganda broadcasts against America. But I think also it was very personal. I think the bird was outraged to have someone as defiant as Louis under his command. He could not break Louis. He broke a lot of men, but Louis was just determined to keep getting up when he was knocked down, to keep looking in this man's eyes when he told him not to, and to keep holding his hands in his fists when, when he was being beaten to show his defiance. That really provoked the bird and, and kept this battle between these two men going. Louis was thrilled about them making it into a film. He wanted to make sure they got it right. And he did, he did not live to see the film made, but he did read the screenplay and, and he loved it. He was very happy about that. He saw some of it um, before he died and he was pleased with everything he saw. I know he was really excited about it. I'm sorry he didn't live to see the premiere, but I think he felt his life was complete, that, that the, the lessons he wanted to convey to the world had been conveyed, his legacy was being carried on, and I think he felt he was ready to rest. I think Angie is a woman who connects very deeply to stories of loss and to people's struggles, that she's especially perceptive to people's pain and is especially compassionate, unusually so. And I think that is the level on which she has connected to Louis and his story. Uh, and I think that's what she's captured so well on film. Um, so I think she she is a, a perfect choice for this, actually. These, these are subjects that I think she already has a very instinctive understanding of, and I think she's done a beautiful job.